Hi, I'm Freetime Coder, and this is the third video in the Unreal PCG tutorial series. Uh, Unreal PCG just came out with Unreal 5.2 preview, and it's very experimental, so be aware that this is probably going to change how the API works, how the nodes look, and everything. So, uh, if you're in the future, be aware of that. In this part, I'll show you how to create points. The previous two tutorials were more concerned with how to get points from the environment, and then this one will actually generate new points based on other points. And I've used this in my forest for rocks that spawn like smaller rocks around them. I've used it for trees that have smaller um, plants around them, and all sorts of stuff like that, even for cutting out other like rocks can cut out plants and stuff. Uh, so I've already set up a basic graph and a basic um, volume and hit the generate button so we can get, get like right into it. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a surface uh, sampler. So we'll sort of just recreate all of the stuff that we've already done. Uh, just have a bunch of points, then do a density sampling on them. Uh, filter, density filter, which I'll set to a very high value, so we are left with only like a few points, and actually still too many. So imagine these are sort of big scattered rocks. And I'm going to transform them slightly so that uh, they have a slight rotation, or like a random rotation. So now they are all oh, actually like this, and there we go. So now they are randomly rotated, and um, the next thing I'm going to do is actually create a grid of points with uh, the create points in grid node. And this is exactly like what it says, just creates the points with a specific spacing in a grid of a, a certain size. Uh, these don't do much, so I'm going to Re now I'm going to show how that looks with the uh, debug option. So maybe a little smaller. So there we go. This is the points that are being created. And they're just, you know, there. Um, but I want to have these points around every of the big points now. So I'm going to use a node that's called copy points. And I use the big points as uh, target, so that's the size of target points where to copy stuff to, and I am using the grid uh, as the source. So I'm gonna show that, and it looks like nothing because they are still too small. So I'm gonna do a debug on them, and there we go. You can see. All the points have been like copy pasted uh, towards to like their parents. Uh, so I don't have to like do this thing every time I want to preview it. I'm going to reset it to uh, extends, and I am going to do a bounce modifier on the smaller points, which will just increase their bounce by like the amount I need. So let's go with. 10, I guess. That's not a 10, that is a 100. So yeah, there we go. You can see like the small points now. Um, obviously in nature, stuff does look as neat. So we're going to transform and add a bit of randomness to it. Uh, transform points and uh, do a, like, let's say 100 in the minus and 100 in the plus. And since we want to keep everything on the landscape, I'm not going to do an offset in the, in the x. It's just going to stay flat. Uh, and we also do a random rotation. So that is that. So every, every point is very random. Uh, next up, to sort of break up this uh, perfectly still squarey shape, I'm going to Calculate the distance from from any like from the closest rock, big big rock, to the small points, 
and then filter the low points out. So I'm gonna add a uh, distance and the source is our transformed parent points and the target are our uh, smaller points. And to visualize them, I'm gonna click set distance and it's probably, oh, actually, I guess it has to be this way around. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna make the distance a bit smaller. That's still too high, maybe a thousand. Uh, it's getting there. You can see like the outer ones getting a different density than the inner ones. Uh, maybe even oh, smaller. Uh, this looks kind of right. Uh, maybe like 500. Yeah, there we go. So that's like sort of the whole range between zero and one from the distance. And then I'm gonna do a density filter. And that is going to cut out the ones that have like two high values. So uh, it should be from zero to let's say 0 0.6. Now you can see the ones that had the density maximum are gone and the ones remaining are sort of just the lower density values. And yeah, there we go. Have some scatters points. You can do another nice thing. Um, and that is you oftentimes want to have the outer scatter points be smaller. So whatever is getting spawned should be like smaller than the inner ones. So what we can do is uh, use a scale by density node. And what this does is it scales the smaller ones with min and then interpolates to max. So we want to have like, since our density is sort of zero in the center and gets bigger to the outside, we want to have the smaller density create larger rocks. So we'll set that to let's say five and the outer one to one. And then you can already see sort of how that affects the scattering and it looks already much much more natural um, that way. So I think the scatter or the transform may be a bit harsh. So I'm gonna slightly adjust that. Yeah, because um, they all sort of have this like ring empty space around them and that kind of looks like too empty. Uh, we can also do like no transform. So they'll be like perfectly in the center. Um, and then I think the density filter might be filtering out the ones in the middle. Yeah, it does. So not sure why that is. Maybe the density is below zero for these points. I'm just gonna make minus one. No, that doesn't work. Uh, so then we'll do it the other way around. We'll do it like from 0 0.5 to one and invert the filter. And there we go. Now the stuff in the middle is also showing up. Um, so yeah, we can do the transform right back. So that wasn't the problem. Like a bit of live debugging. Yeah, there we go. And then show these again and show these again. And this looks nice. Um, now in real life, or uh, real life, well, in like in a real use case, you don't want like the small, you might, but you generally don't want the smaller rocks intersecting the bigger rocks. So what you can do is use essentially the same trick we had in the spline path tutorial and cut out the big shape from the smaller ones. So what we're gonna do is uh, a difference, actually put the large rocks in, in the differences and put the small rocks in the source and then set the density to binary and there we go well it's a bit <laughs> it's a bit much again but you can tweak this by uh changing like changing the size or the bounds so what we can do is uh we take 
these big rocks and we do a bounce modifier and put that in difference and then set the modifying to like you know 0.8 let's copy this value everywhere and you can see there's already already points returning yeah that's maybe a bit much but you get the idea um, and then another cool thing is if you do like a transform point and we actually scale these differently uh, then you can see the copy points is is taking like respecting that so the smaller parent point actually has smaller scatter around it and the bigger ones have bigger scatter um, and I think that's pretty much it for how to scatter stuff around. Uh, there's actually another note um, that's kind of helpful and that is self-pruning. Uh, a disclaimer, I have not quite figured out how this works, um, but essentially, okay, that's a bit much. Uh, essentially it tries, I think, to get rid of points that intersect each other. Um, but I'm not quite sure uh, how this node works. It is, uh... ah, there we go, maybe. Well, <laughs> use at your own risk. Uh, and if anyone of anyone figures out how this node really works, uh, let me know. Um, because it is quite helpful for like getting rid of density, but it's sort of uncontrollable, <laughs> at least for me, um, how much it gets rid of how much it gets rid of so yeah uh, and that's it for scattering points and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I'll see you in the next one bye